What's up everybody, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you guys are all having a good day. This is Josh here with Vault Hunters Union. I am here with some big news for all my friends in the gaming community. If you were paying attention yesterday, Sony came out and unveiled the PlayStation 4 finally in front of a live crowd in New York City. I watched part of the presentation. They did a very good job of explaining the things that you need to know, but also keeping a lot of things a mystery just to kind of add the, uh, you know, just to kind of build up the anticipation for the console. The purpose of this video here is just to talk about the different things they covered yesterday, talk about the features and the different things that are going to be available with the console, as well as give my various opinions on what I'm going to expect. So in terms of hardware with the PS4, Sony didn't announce what the graphics card would be. They did mention it would be AMD based. In terms of the processor, they did say it would be a single chip custom processor. It's the x86 AMD Jaguar processor with 8 cores. They did say that the RAM, it does have 8 gigabytes of DDR5, but in terms of actual video, they didn't mention what graphics processor would be available, so that's going to be something that you're pretty much going to have to stay tuned for, but you can definitely expect it's going to be one of their more high-end graphics cards. Might even be something you can't buy on a PC. It's really hard to say at this point. In terms of other various hardware available on the PS4 that they talked about, it will have a 6-speed Blu-ray drive and an 8-speed DVD drive. It will feature USB 3.0 ports on the front. Uh, the PS3 featured USB 2. It will have the standard Ethernet as well as built-in wireless as well and also feature Bluetooth 2.1. And the outputs, it will have... Uh, HDMI, the analog, and the digital output for optical audio. Now Sony did not actually show the physical model at the expo. They didn't show what the model would look like or offer any sort of concept art, but you can definitely expect it is going to be really cool and really stealthy. They did offer some video, some gameplay footage that I definitely advise you to check out. I will put a link to some footage in the in the description below. They offered some footage to games like The Kill Zone uh, and some other games that are going to be released on release day for the PS4. Now the biggest new feature of the PS4 that they talked about at the expo and the thing that they cover the most was definitely the new controller. They are calling the new controller for the PS4 the DualShock 4 controller. It features a touchpad, a share button, a light bar, and a headphone jack. The light bar is something that syncs with the camera that will be built into the PS4. This allows the console to track the depth of the controller, similar to the Wii. When looking at the controller, you will notice a few cosmetic differences. The controller is generally the same shape as the DualShock 3 controller, a little bit different the joysticks do look a little bit different as well. The biggest cosmetic difference you'll see is that there's no longer a start and select button to access those they've announced. You'll have to go to the options on the right of the touchpad. To the left of the touchpad, you'll see there's a share button, which we'll talk about in a moment. And in the center is the touchpad. Sony didn't go into too much detail about the features of the touchpad, but they did say it would open up a lot more doors for gamers, a lot more opportunities, and open up a new element of gaming. Now, with the tablets basically taking over the market for the last little while, Sony sales have gone down. So Sony has realized that they have to kind of open up more to social media, and that's what the share button is for. I believe they're going to add a feature for recording video and taking screenshots in game and the share button is just going to allow you to quickly share that on your social media sites like Twitter as well as Facebook and I think I read something about the fact that they're going to allow you to record video and upload it to YouTube as well. Uh, I'm not too sure about the last part but definitely the share button will be for sharing with friends and also sharing with social media sites. Another big new feature of the controller is that it does feature, you'll see in between the two joysticks, a small speaker. Uh, Sony incorporated a small mono speaker with also a stereo jack. This enables a gamer to speak in a headset and simultaneously hear game audio emerging from the controller at the same time. So I believe, what I'm, if I understand that correctly, you're no longer going to need to buy a headset. You can use the controller to talk as well as hear audio coming from the headset at the same time, which is pretty cool. I'm a little skeptical about the quality of the sound coming from that little speaker, uh, but I guess time will tell and see how they do. Again, without going into too much detail, they did talk about the different things that will be available with the system. The controller was the biggest thing that they talked about. They were more open to talking about the features of the controller. The last big thing that they talked about with this is that you will now have the ability to charge the controller while the system is off. That was always a pain in the ass for me when I had the PS3. You had to have this console on to charge the controller, so if the controller died and you had to stop gaming, you had to leave the system on to charge the controller. So that got kind of annoying. Um, you also could plug it into a computer, but that's neither here nor there. But that's a cool feature that they add so that you can charge the controller, you can turn off the system when your controller dies, and come back on a couple hours later, your controller will be charged, and you can resume gaming. So last but not least, I'm going to talk about the additional features of the PS4 that I haven't already talked about. These are kind of things that I'm looking forward to and I'm excited for. Some of the things they include, some seamless uploads of gameplay, so you can upload and download at the same time. Sony has integrated two chips to allow this to happen. Uh, you're able to actually now spectate friends gameplay sessions in real time provided you're both online. You can just, you know, jump in and see what they're seeing on the screen. Kind of creepy, but you know, it's it's something that people wanted to see. There's also integrated chat. Uh, the coolest feature I think that they're adding to the PS4 is that you'll be able to play games as they're being downloaded. So as you're downloading a game, if you're digitally downloading it, you'll be able to play it as it's being downloaded, which is awesome. Sony has said that there will be no backwards compatibility for old games. This is a consequence of Sony moving 
moving from the cell architecture on the previous consoles to the x86 processor, but they have said that in the future there will be a cloud-based streaming service to allow you to play PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. This hasn't been 100% confirmed, as in they haven't announced that it's, it's happening right now, but they did say in the future that this will be a service that's available. So now the biggest question of the day, will or will you not buy the PS4 when it comes out? Um, and my answer is no. I used to be a very big console gamer. Consoles were basically where I did all my gaming. And then I switched to PC and got a higher end PC. And uh, I don't think I'll ever go back from PC gaming. They have said that the PS4 will probably be able to compare to mid-range gaming computers and when you have a higher end gaming computer uh, it's still going to be superior to the PS4 so I'll probably stick to that. The big problem I have with Sony is that they tend to charge ridiculous amounts for their consoles when they first come out and history shows that their first consoles offer very little hard drive space. Sony hasn't announced what the hard drive spaces will be but if history repeats itself they will be very small. Uh, when the PS3 first launched they had 20 gig and 60 gig consoles. 20 gigs was $500, 60 gigs was $600. You can now buy 250 gigs for uh, I believe about $250 now brand new um, so hard drive space is always something that they have a problem with at first and paying that much money for that really doesn't seem worth it to me but that being said i may end up getting the system down the road there's no reason i won't ps4 will definitely have some exclusives that you won't be able to get on other consoles just like the ps3 does that makes the system worth getting all by itself but i'm probably going to wait till the prices go down many of the games that are going to be out on ps4 will also be out on pc and will look better anyway but i might get a ps4 just for the standalone games but that's just my opinion I would like to hear your guys' opinions though, so feel free to leave a like rating below, and if you have any comments, anything you'd like to add, or comments on what I said, or comments on the system itself, your opinions if you're going to buy it, I'd love to hear it below. Other than that guys, I don't have a whole lot more to say. Hope you guys all have a good day, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, do lots of gameplay stuff. Other than that, peace out guys.